Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name is Michael and I'm bitten by radioactive book. Today it's Thursday and that means we'll continue in our guide to fantasy and this week's topic is sword and sorcery. Sword and sorcery is kind of the antithesis to all we've learned about epic and traditional fantasy in the last couple of weeks because the motivations and um, consequences of the actions of characters are yeah, um, very different from what we've known from the more traditional fantasy settings. This, this controversy is marked with like two books because on the one hand um, you had like The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien where you had very idealistic characters and the consequences of their actions were, yeah, like um, really spanning um, the world, the whole world of Middle-earth. And on the other hand, you had uh, Conan the Barbarian. And um, Conan was very, yeah, more driven by, by personal um, needs and motivations and the consequences of his actions affected more he, himself and his immediate surroundings. So uh, kind of um, you, you can actually say that like all we consider like modern fantasy either comes from this approach um, of the Lord of the Rings or from the approach of Conan the Barbarian. The real definition of the term of sword and sorcery, which Conan kind of founded, but was given to the genre actually in the 70s by a series by Fritz Leiber, or Fritz Lieber, um, and this is the Fart and Grey Mauser series, um, and this, yeah, uh, had um, always sword in the in the title, and uh, it had this setup that we are now seeing very often in sword and sorcery. Um, we have a fighting character representing the sword, and we have a magic user representing the sorcery. And this is actually where the term sword and sorcery comes from, because the whole genre is basically set around friendships. Um, as you can see we have sword and sorcery, we have two elements and these elements mostly represent two characters. Um, it has not always to be this kind of distinction like there's one who is clearly a mage and there's one like clearly who's clearly a fighter because the genre in itself got way more diverse and, and grew, but this is how it all started and this is why it's called Sword and Sorcery. Maybe even if you now have stuff like you have two thieves, or um, like in Lies of Locramora, for example, it's still Sword and Sorcery because the kind of themes and the kind of setup is, is the same. We see that stories often uh, involve these uh, a friendship, um, um, between two characters and these two characters are very often male characters so the friendship is mostly a platonic friendship a friendship of camaraderie uh, and loyalty and not so much like a romantic relationship there are um, books that deal with that as well there are as well um, books where the uh, um, uh, where the, both uh, of the two male characters are getting involved romantically as well, like in the Night Runner series by Lynn Flavelling. And we also have like straight couples um, where there's a man and a woman and they're like a couple, like in Chris Willick's series, Gaunt and Bone, I think, or in Alexei Payhoff's Chaser of the Wind. Um, so this is what happens as well, but uh, in the majority of the genre it's about a, a friend relationship between two characters and the loyalty they have towards each other. So 
we have characters that are mainly motivated by personal reasons. We have characters, mostly two males, that are yeah, involved in a kind of uh, loyal friendship. And we have consequences that are mostly, yeah, um, happen just to the two characters or their immediate surroundings. Um, together with this, um, we also have like action. Um, uh, action, physical action, physical hand-to-hand -hand fighting is also a very common element of the series and most, uh, um, yeah, most of the times you will see this. Again, in contrast to epic fantasy, where you often have more, uh, where, where action scenes are often more focused on, on huge and epic battles between armies. Uh, in Sword and Sorcery this is way more hand-to-hand -hand, um, and yeah, the action is more like immediate. And now that we have established epic fantasy and Sword and Sorcery, there's something I want to yeah um, point your attention towards because this might actually help you in picking up um, a genre um, when you're in, in a bookshop or browse on, on a website um, to show you that you can already see most of the time by the cover if the book is either an epic fantasy or sword and sorcery. Uh, it doesn't work like, like every time but you will see that there are a lot of books that follow or book covers that follow certain rules. For example, if you look into more epic um, fantasy books, you will often have like 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 a singular character, but he isn't the focus of the cover, and there's more like a panorama shot, or there are like huge armies or huge sceneries there, or only like stylized symbols symbols of power or weapons on the cover or something like this. Most of the time all those book covers belong to the epic fantasy uh, genre or subgenre. And if you look into sword and sorcery covers, you will often see uh, the bo uh, or the two main protagonists um, featured there in a more or less action position. Uh, they have their weapons out or maybe preparing to fight, uh, they're running away and flying from something. Um, so the uh, sword and sorcery covers are often like like a bit more action packed or yeah um, uh, and and have more of the characters itself in in the focus, for example. So if you're interested in that, try it out. Maybe with your with your own books, look at the cover, see how they are made up, and look up a few books maybe on 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 Goodreads, and you will actually see if you train yourself a bit, you can pick up like in a bookshop, I think, ten books, and in nine out of ten, you can just say by the cover, oh, that's sword and sorcery, or that's epic fantasy. If you train yourself, uh, I promise you, this really works, and it helps a lot. So let's go into the recommendations segment. Um, first off, I already talked about this in the in the little history of the term segment. Um, the defining series is the Fart and Grey Mauser series by Fritz Leiber. Um, it's about Fart, who is a barbarian, and the Grey Mauser, who is kind of a magician's apprentice. And um, something that is also very traditional of these older sword and sorcery um, stories is that you don't necessarily have to yeah, have like a huge main narrative, a huge plot like an epic fantasy, and therefore often these more traditional stories were actually collections of short stories about um, these duos. Um, so uh, a lot of the older sword and sorcery, I think Conan is also told in, uh, uh, in more short stories, and uh, the whole um, Fart and Grey Mauser series are actually books that consist of short stories. I think there are seven books in there and none of them is like a, a novel in itself but every 
book contains like three, six, or even ten short stories. Um, but if you are really interested to say, I want to experience that genre from the roots, this would be the point to start. And in a more modern tradition of um, Fart and the Grey Mauser, we have uh, Gotrak and Felix. These are, yeah, I think the uh, Fart and Grey Mauser of the uh, Warhammer universe. Uh, Warhammer is uh, normally a tabletop game where you play with uh, yeah with little figurines and create armies of dwarves, elves, humans, orcs, chaos, vampires, skeletons, you name it, and fight each other on on a battlefield. Um, uh, but there's also a huge tradition for this uh, for this universe to have like uh, novels created around it. There are actually like hundreds of novels that are set in the uh, in the world of Warhammer. But the most prominent one, I would say, is the twelfth book series um, of Gotrek and Felix, and um, I think they they switched authors. Uh, between, but the uh, I think first six are uh, written by William H. King, and uh, the first one also follows this tradition to show I think six or seven uh, short stories about this duo. And Gortrek is a dwarven troll slayer, and troll slayers are yeah dwarves that have put sh some shame on themselves and the only way to redeem themselves is by dying uh, when they fight a superior foe. And therefore the Draven Slayer is like a really crazy berserker kind of character that always seeks out the biggest and meanest challenge, maybe a troll, uh, uh, an, an orc fighter, a demon, a dragon, and yeah, he goes straight forward and fights it because he hopes to die in the fight. And and uh, and Gortrek is this kind of uh, dwarven slayer, and um, his friend Felix Jäger is a um, yeah kind of bard or at least chronicler. And Gortrek said, "Yeah, you are the guy. Come on, follow me and write up all my." Tales and uh, to show uh, the dwarves afterwards when I die that I yeah um, redeem myself and of course as you can see that uh, the series has like twelve books it's quite difficult for him to die and the challenges get bigger and bigger and bigger and yeah it's uh, I, I read the first uh, book um, this year and I think it's uh, uh, it's a very nice and, and, and good series um, to start. And of course we can't talk about this genre without mentioning the, I think, most popular Sword and Sorcery series or uh, series in the tradition of Sword and Sorcery that is out there at the moment. And this is definitely The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. Um, it doesn't necessarily have this yeah, kind of distinction in the friendship between Locke and Jean, um, who are not like a fighter and a mage, uh, because they're both not, not mages, they're both thieves, um, but uh, the, the friendship, loyalty, the way how they um, experience their adventures, it's clearly in the tradition of sword and sorcery, and it's one of those yeah works that shows us um, yeah what kind of direction source and sorcery can actually take uh, today. Um, I think I don't have to tell you uh, that much about the series other than that uh, Lord Lamora as the main character is a thief who yeah, always with his crew tries to pull off very complex uh, cons and uh, it's a book with a lot of humor and, uh, and banter um, between the, the characters and yeah, you can really feel the friendship and camaraderie and it's highly, highly recommended. 
the next series I've put in there, although I haven't read it, but it's a recommendation uh, that I've got from a lot of people on Goodreads who read fantasy, and of course from Samantha from Novels and Nonsense, and it's a book that I'm actually going to read um, later this month. It's Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan, and the two main characters there, Hadrian and Royce, um, are two thieves as well, but I think one of them is also a mage or has magical abilities. I'm, I'm not sure, but, but I think this is also one of the more modern day examples of this kind of camaraderie, friendship between uh, two male characters, and therefore I wanted to include it, because I think it is also very popular and hyped in the fantasy community uh, reader-wise, and it might get now more popular here on Booktube as well, because it is mentioned more often and more people are picking up this trilogy, like me, and we'll talk about it in the future. So I think it, uh, yeah, it is some kind of booktube way to uh, uh, include it here as well. And last but certainly not least, I wanted to include a book to show you what's also possible with the sword and sorcery genre in kind of setting and diversity. Um, it's The Throne of the Crescent Moon by Saladin Ahmed. It's um, also a sword and sorcery, but it has not the traditional uh, two male character thing. It has um, that of a bit, because you have an older mentor um, who is like a ghoul hunter, and he's more like like a wise alchemist, maybe, mage, um, and he has a very young um, apprentice who is yeah more of a, a fighter, um, a, um, a dervish, I think, and they pick up a a young woman who is, I think, a shape changer as well, and they are fighting ghouls in a yeah Arabic inspired setting. And um, this book actually uh, didn't win, but was nominated for the Hugo last year or two years ago. So you can see that uh, the book got a lot of praise. Um, and yeah, I wanted to include it here as well to show you how broad uh, and diverse this genre can be. So that's it for this part today. Um, if you think about sword and sorcery a bit, then um, you will come to the conclusion that it does not have to be, but can often um, be like limited to a certain space for example, a city. And uh, and in the recommendations we have like at least a few examples like Lies of Lokoramora or uh, Throne of the Crescent Moon that mainly play in one city. And if a novel plays mainly in one city, we consider it an urban fantasy. And to show you that this is not only a term that is used to yeah, describe um, like contemporary settings, but this also works very well in a secondary setting. Next week's topic of the guide will be urban fantasy. I hope you enjoyed this part of my guide. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel. If you want to know what's coming up on my channel, look inside the description box. There's a little segment there called On the Horizon. I wish you a good day and hope you get bitten by a really good book too. Bye.